the storyteller presents Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, on the edge of the black forest, there lived a kindly woodcutter, his two children, Hansel and Gretel, and their stepmother. They were very poor, and the only thing they had left to eat were two pieces of bread. One night, the father couldn't sleep. He was tossing in his bed. Oh, what shall I do? I love my children, but they are starving. In that case, we will send them away. We will take them into the forest and let them find their own food. Oh, no, not that. If we don't, we will all starve. He argued with the stepmother, but finally, with a heavy heart, he agreed. In the next bedroom, Hansel and Gretel were still awake and overheard everything through the very thin walls. When Gretel heard what her stepmother was planning to do, she started to cry. Hansel, if they leave us in the woods, what will happen to us? But Hansel was a clever lad who always knew how to solve difficult problems. He tiptoed over to his sister and tenderly pressed her hand. Don't be afraid, Gretel. I won't let them leave us. He put on his jacket and slipped out of the door. Outside, the moon cast a glow on thousands of white pebbles that glittered like daisies on a green meadow. Hansel stuffed his pockets with the white stones. Gretel was still awake when he returned. What did you do? I'll show you in the morning. Don't worry and go to sleep. Everything will be all right. Just as the sun came up, their stepmother pounded on their door. Get up, you lazy children. We are going into the forest to cut wood. Here is a crust of bread. Save it for later. They started into the woods, and soon it became almost as dark as night because the heavy pine trees above would not let the sun shine through. All the while, Hansel was secretly dropping a trail of little white pebbles. Hours later, they stopped, deep in the forest. The father piled up a heap of brushwood and made a fire. Soon it was bright and warm and crackling. Their stepmother was all smiles. Sit by the fire and go to sleep, little ones. We will go and cut wood and come back for you later. Hansel and Gretel knew that she was not telling the truth. But still they waited and waited. But no one came to get them. The darkness finally surrounded them completely. And Gretel began to cry. <coughs> Hansel silently put his arms around her and they fell asleep. It was midnight when they woke up and the moon was shining on the white pebbles, bright and glittery, dotting a path through the forest. Taking Gretel by the hand, Hansel led them right back to their little cottage. Their father was happy to see them. My children, how happy I am that you are safe. But their stepmother was very angry. How could you worry us so by getting lost in the woods? A few days later, when the father was away, the nasty woman took the children into the forest herself. This time, Hansel did not have any pebbles, only a piece of bread. But he was a smart boy. He told his sister, I will tear up the bread and use the crumbs to make a trail. He carefully dropped the crumbs one by one. But by the time they reached the middle of the forest, Thousands of little birds had come along and eaten up all the crumbs. The stepmother pretended to go and gather wood, but she did not come back. When the children tried to find their way home, there were no crumbs to show them the way. They were really lost. Gretel, I'm so hungry. Hansel, I'm so frightened. 
We must pray, dear Gretel, for our Heavenly Father to help us. He loves us and will not let us starve in the woods. They knelt and said their prayers. When at night we go to sleep, fourteen angels watch, please keep. And then they fell into a deep sleep. The cheerful singing of forest birds awakened the two children. Again they started to search for their way home. Soon they were more lost than ever. They were so tired and hungry that they could not move another step. Gretel, look! What is that? There! Through the trees is a beautiful little cottage! The walls were made of gingerbread dotted with raisins and nuts. The roof was made of cake heaped with frosting and red cherries. And the windows were sugar candy. First, the children stared, unable to believe their eyes. Then they started running towards the cottage. Without a word, Gretel carefully broke off and ate a piece of window, and Hansel ate a big piece of roof. Then they heard a lady's voice calling. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is eating from my house? They looked at each other in surprise. But before they could say anything, a little old lady hobbled around the corner. The old lady was very nice to them. You poor children! You look tired and hungry. Come inside. I'll give you something to eat. She led them into her cottage and brought them cakes, apples, and candy. Then she took them into her bedroom, where they fell asleep on the softest beds they had ever seen. The old lady was really a wicked witch, and her gingerbread cottage was a trap to attract little children so she could eat them up. So, while Hansel was sleeping, she said, I will carry him outside and lock him in the hen house. I will feed him good food every day to fatten him up. Each day I will tell him to put his finger through the door so I can feel how much fatter he has become. The old witch could not see very well, and Hansel fooled her by sticking a chicken bone through the door each time. After several weeks, the witch still did not find Hansel any fatter. But she was so impatient that she decided to cook him in the soup anyway. She told Gretel, Get up and light the oven! I'm ready to cook your brother! She dragged the <laughs> sobbing girl into the kitchen, and Gretel lit the oven. <laughs> now climb inside and see if it is right for baking bread. Gretel suddenly knew what the witch was thinking. She wanted to push Gretel into the oven. I don't know how to do it. Silly little girl, I'll show you. Look, I can do it. And the witch stuck her head into the oven. Quick as a wink, Gretel pushed the witch right inside, slammed the door and locked it tight. <laughs> Gretel ran to let Hansel out of the hen house. When they knew the witch was gone for good, Hansel and Gretel danced with happiness. They looked through the house and found lots of treasures. They put as much as they could into their pockets and ran out of the house. Suddenly, they recognized this part of the forest and soon came to their own cottage. Their father ran out to greet them. Oh, my children, I am so happy that you are home again. The nasty stepmother had left their cottage some time ago and had sworn never to return. The children showed their father all the treasures they had found, and they were no longer poor. Hansel and Gretel and their lucky father lived happily forever and ever.